a beautiful morning to you, my amazing students. I also welcome you to class once again. It's a real privilege to have you on this medium. And I want to advise you to please sit down quietly, get your writing materials, and let's start the class. So then you are examining phrase analysis. Remember, I remain Mr. Dakori Moloye. And I will say this, I have this platform, I wish this platform was available during our own time. Please make maximum use of this platform. It is changing lives and imparting knowledge. Let's go to the objectives for the class. Number one, at the end of the class, you should be able to define phrases. You should be able to define phrases at the end of the class. That's one. Number two, you should be able to state types of phrases. You should be able to state types of phrases. Number three, you should be able to explain the types with good examples, copious examples. And number four, you should be able to identify phrases easily in sentences. You should be able to identify phrases easily in sentences. And number five, you should be able to differentiate between a phrase and a clause. Differentiate between a phrase and a clause. Then to the correction to our last assignment. Last class I gave us this assignment on adverbs. I said you should underline adverbs in the following sentences. I've done this for you. You can see the adverb here. The answer is here. The answer is here. It is here. It is here. It is here. We have it here. We have it here. We have it here also. And lastly, we have it here. All these have modified either the verb or the adjective or another adverb. Modified the verb swallowed, it's modified look, it's modified is walking, modified partied, it's modifying the sentence itself. This is modifying road, this is modifying deed, this is modifying this adjective visible, this is modifying this adverb difficult, and lastly, this is modifying this verb went. So these are the answers to our last assignment. Then let's go to why we are in class today, phrases. It's a group of words that stands together as a grammatical unit, a group of words. Most times, they form part of a clause or a sentence. That is, they can't stand on their own. That's why they form parts. See? Parts they can stand their own. That is, it cannot convey a thought, a complete thought. It cannot complete a complete meaning. And like like you have it here, it doesn't contain a subject or a verb. Most times they can contain. Things are changing. This is English. It's, it's a dynamic language is changing. Sometimes it can contain a verb or a subject. But note this, they can never, a phrase can never convey a complete thought. But like a clause that can do that. Note that a clause can do that, but a phrase cannot contain a complete thought. Then see examples of phrases here. Examples, once in a blue moon, that's meaningless. What happens once in a blue moon, we don't know. Reading the book, that's meaningless. Although there's a, there is a noun here, there's a subject here, that is reading, we call it ing nouns, gerunds. To, to be free, uh -huh. but when you are free, what do you do? Meaningless. Totally delicious food. Yes, who prepared it? What's wrong with it? Running water, under meaningless group of words. Sitting on the chair, it has a subject which is sitting, a hang nouns, but it's meaningless because it has no finite verbs. In short, phrases don't have finite verbs. Phrases don't have Finite verbs. And finite verbs show real action. Actions. Finite verbs show real actions. So phrases don't have finite verbs. And here also another phrase, a group of words is meaningless. Now let's see types of phrases. The first type is the adjectiver. Adjectiver. And what it does is to function as an adjective. And an adjective in a sentence will always 
qualify or modify the noun or a pronoun. I said it functions as an adjective, that is, it qualifies or modifies the noun or a pronoun. And uh, we have it here, modifies nouns. And can also modify the pronoun. That is what an adjective will do. And an adjective is always an Edward. See it here. An Edward, which is always an adjective as a word itself. Then examples include our uh, eyes were incredibly mesmerizing to the young man. What was incredibly mesmerizing to the young man? The eyes. This is qualifying the eyes. The highly emotive actor gave a wonderful performance. Who gave the performance? Which actor? Sorry, which actor? The highly emotive one is qualifying this now. Your apple pie smells very tempting. What smells very tempting? Apple pie. This is a noun. This is the adjective that is qualifying apple pie. It smells very tempting. The extremely tired kitten fell asleep by a food dish. Who fell? Which kitten fell asleep? Which kitten? Extremely tired one. Qualifying kitten here. Yeah. The overly enthusiastic fans painted their bodies with their team's color. Which fans? Which kind of fans? The overly enthusiastic one. That is telling you the kind of fans that did that. The number six, the dog. Which dog? The one covered in mud. The dog covered in mud. Did what? Make a mess in a car. And lastly, cowboys riding into the sunset. Which ones? Which cowboys? The ones riding into the sunset. Let me give you a clue as regards high time phrases. They stay close, they stay close, they stay close to the noun or pronoun. They are modifying, modifying or qualifying. They stay very close to it or qualifying. They stay close to it. So you can see from all these examples that they stay very close to it. Then an adverbia now. Like an adverb, it qualifies and modifies a verb, native or another adverb, that is. An adverbia phrase performs the function of an adverb in a sentence. That is, the way an adverb works in a sentence is the same way an adverbia phrase works. They work in the same way. Then, they answer some series of questions. That's why we have them in types. They answer the question how, where, why, when, and lots more. Let's see examples in the next slide. We can have types of adverbia in this, in this manner. We have adverbs of manner, adverb of place, adverb of time, of frequency, of degree, of sentence. And they work in different dynamic ways. Like number one now, he worked very carefully. How did he work? How? How? Manner. How? Manner. Very carefully. It, here is where I was born. Here is where I was born. Here, that is, that, that, that is right here. Where? Right here. This answers please, which takes the question where? And they got home very late. And they got home very late. Very late. When daddy gets home? When daddy gets home? Very late. And this has a question when. The question when. Then, this pill will take away the pain temporarily. Number one, it can answer when. It can answer how. How? Temporarily. Then when? Temporarily. So, these are the ways adverbs work. They modify verbs. They modify adjectives. 
and they modify another adverb and uh, at times they ask series of wonderful questions then to the noun phrase now which is a bit complicated a noun phrase is a group of words that has a noun as an edward that is added by a noun and uh, it performs the function of a noun in a sentence this is a topic on its own and uh, the enough phrase works in many ways mind you the overall function of a noun phrase is to name because nouns name and i told you it performs a role and uh, you can see a noun phrase note this a noun phrase can be replaced or added by a pronoun. A noun phrase can also be replaced or added by a pronoun. You will see illustration in my examples. Let's see examples of noun phrases here. Noun phrase that includes people, the one that includes animal, the ones that include places, the ones that include things, the ones that include idea. Not one thing about phrases. We don't term a word to be a phrase. A phrase is a group of words, not a single word. See all my examples here. There is no single word here as a phrase. A phrase is a group that is two or more words from a phrase. And you've seen from all examples that all your adjectival and adverbal phrases are more than a word. Are more than a word. And still they function like the adjective, like the adverb, and like the noun will do. Then functions now of a noun phrase. A noun phrase can work in diverse ways. It can work in five, six major ways. My one is that a noun phrase can act as subject of the verb. I call it SV. It can act as subject of the verb. And mind you, I said a noun phrase can be replaced or added by a noun or a pronoun. For a noun phrase to work as SV, like I said here, yeah, the noun phrase must be before the verb. It must be before the what? The verb. That is, it is coming before the verb. Coming before the verb the noun phrase is in front of the verb here is the noun phrase the third tree the third tree is a noun phrase fell is a verb the third tree is a noun phrase this is a verb the baby cried is a noun phrase this is a verb Dogs and cats, the noun phrase, the noun phrase NP, and this is the verb. And simply put, I said the noun phrase must come before. You can see them come before. That's why they are functioning as SV. I said you can replace a noun phrase with a pronoun. I can tell you it fell, the tree. It fell. I can tell you they cried. I can tell you they make excellent. I can, I'm placing them here. They make excellent pets. Note this about noun phrases. You can replace them with a pronoun. And when your noun phrase is working as SV, I said the noun phrase must must come before the verb. Must come before the verb. In your notes. Add two examples of your own in your notes. And after the class, send them to me. Snap the examples you've written and send them to me. Let me repeat myself. I've given you three examples here. Add two more in your notes and send the examples to me via my email address that I will give, it, that I will give to you at the end of the class. Then, a noun phrase that work as object of the verb i call it ov when a noun phrase works as ov it is working as direct object working as what direct object and that means the noun phrase 
comes after the verb. The noun phrase comes after the verb. After. I wish to see the manager. This is the noun phrase. This is the verb. The children ate all the cookies. All the cookies is the noun phrase. Ate is the verb. My professor recommended an extremely captivating book. This is the noun phrase NP. This is the verb. Let me come again. I said for a noun phrase to function as object of the verb, it must come after the verb. It must come after the verb. And this is the verb here, which to see. And mind you, I also said you can replace a noun phrase. You can replace a noun phrase with a pronoun. Or you can add a noun phrase with a pronoun. I can tell you here, I wish to see him. I have replaced the manager with a pronoun there. The children ate all cookies. That's it now. Or all of them. All of them. That is them is what? A pronoun. My professor recommended it. IT. A pronoun. Replacing the noun phrase there. Note it. I said here that for a noun phrase to work as OV, which I refer to as object of the verb, the noun phrase must come afterwards, after the verb. Good. Then, for a noun phrase to work as subject complement, it implies that that noun phrase is the same thing, sorry, the single candidate, the same thing or same person as the subject. Same thing or same person as the subject. Now let me give you a clue here. Between the subject and the noun phrase, between the subject and the noun phrase, there's always is or are or was or were in between. Between the subject and the noun phrase, there's always is, are, was or were in between. And most places they call them verb complement and complement of the of, of the verb. You are learning something new. This is a noun phrase here. This is a noun phrase here. This is a noun phrase here. Mind you, I told you that the noun phrase is the same thing as it was the subject. What is the subject here? My grandfather. Who is my grandfather? A farmer. Who is a farmer? My grandfather. The same thing. No argument. They are the same thing. My favorite pets are dogs with short hair. What are my favorite pets? Dogs with short hair. What are dogs with short hair? Favorite pets, which is a subject. I can see it's coming after R. Mr. James is a handsome man. Who is Mr. James? A handsome man. Who is a handsome man, Mr. James? You can see they are the same thing. Right? Like I told you, you can replace a noun phrase with what? A pronoun. My grandfather is him. My grandfather is him. The dog, the favorite pets are ours. You can replace it with a pronoun here. Mr. James is him. Simple facts. Simple fact. Like I said, here it is working as SC, which is some complement, because the noun phrase, which I've underlined here, is the same thing as the subject. The subject. Then, for noun phrase to work as object complement, we call it OC. That is, it is working as an indirect, indirect object. Why? Because it is coming, it's coming, coming after the direct object. It is coming after what? The direct object. My husband bought me. This is direct object here. Me. The child drew his mother. This is a direct object. This is a direct object. Yeah. The governor gave the brilliant boy. This is a direct object here. 
Meaning that anything you have after the direct object is a noun phrase working as object complement. Subliminal flowers, object complement, complementing the object, a nice picture coming after what? Direct object. A deserving scholarship coming after the direct object. So that makes it an indirect object and is functioning as an object complement, complementing the object. And I told you we can replace them with a pronoun. Don't mind me, I'll do that for you. My husband gave me gave me them. Or you can say, my husband gave them to me. Give them to me. Them is replacing this. The child drew it for his mother. It. You have to make them come in to function well. Draw it. What's the it there? A nice picture. The governor gave him, gave the boy, gave it to the brilliant boy. Serving award, it to the brilliant boy. Then, we have noun phrase working as apposition. Sorry. Complement of the preposition. This is very simple and straightforward. We call it CP, complement of what? The preposition. This is called OC, yes. This is called CP, complement of the preposition. This is when the noun phrase comes after the preposition. It comes after, very simple, the preposition. We all know what prepositions are. We can list them. So let's look for preposition here. This preposition here. This is a Preposition here. This is a preposition here. That is everything after them now. Their noun phrases, our children, their spring break, the lengthy days. As noun phrases here, they are functioning as what? Complement of the preposition as noun phrases. And God knows we can replace them, I said, with a noun pronoun. My husband bought flowers for them. Them. Our children. For them. You can say the students studied during it, which is it, their spring break. We missed our flight because of them or because of it. Was it it or them? A lengthy delay. So please and please, let's try and note this very well. Very important. I would advise you to go over these examples again and again and again for you to grab the message in it. Then lastly. A noun phrase can work as opposition to a noun. It is working in opposition. That is, working closely to a noun. Closing closely to a noun. That's what we call opposition. And it has one unique feature. It is separated by a comma. The noun phrase is separated by a comma from the subject. Separated by a comma from the subject. Comma is here. That means this is a noun phrase. This is what? The subject. Comma is here. That means this is a noun phrase. Mr. Tapa is the subject. Comma is here. That means this is a noun phrase. And this is the subject. So that's one thing about noun phrases working as a position to the noun. But in this case, at times, at times we find it very hard to replace them with a noun. Or a pronoun in this case. We find it very hard to replace the noun phrases with a pronoun. Because they are working in the middle. They are working in opposition. They are more or less the subject. It's just a further addition to the subject. Then in conclusion, we've seen how phrases work. We've seen that a phrase must not contain a subject and a verb. And even when it contains it, it is meaningless, it can't con convey a thought. Then I tell a phrase I said, I tell can modify or qualify a noun or a pronoun. Then adverbia can modify a verb, an adjective, and another adverb. The noun phrase can work in six different ways, which I've listed and I've explained in previous slides. Please, I will say this again. Create time to go over those examples and those slides again to get the message again and again. Then, in conclusion, in final conclusion, please, these textbooks are very important. For you to go to go to these textbooks and this reference material, learn more from them about noun phrases, and you'll be good for it. For your assignments, state the types of phrases online in the following sentences. You tell me their types. You can see 
the black Italian bag was bought by me. Sleeping with Alex is doing with us. I left the bag in my school, the ball in my school bag, I studied it in the library. She bought the cake in the new Chinese restaurant. Football is best played in the morning. Kemi is the new school nurse. These seven examples, I want their types written before them, written front of them against next class. Till we see again next class, I want to say a big thank you for listening to me. God bless you. Keep studying. Do my assignments. Send my examples to dakbo.orimoloe at Greenland Greenland all dot org. Till we see again next time. Stay blessed.